Hi everyone, welcome to Board of Tanks with Stewie JP. I'm Stewie, you're not, and I don't know what just happened to the picture there, but that uh, should be all okay now. This is a bit of an extravaganza, a tier 10 extravaganza in today's video. We have um, Crazy been the first one in the Jagpanzer E100, the Jagpanzer E100 being the tier 10, um, the tier 10 German tank destroyer, but the one that's got lots of armor compared to the obviously not. Uh, like the grill, obviously the grill doesn't have armor. I suppose I probably could have said that a little bit more clearly at the beginning, but we here we are on um, Westfield. It's an all tier 10 battle, and Crazy from Crown Clan is not stuffing around. He's getting stuck into where the heavies go, and this is you can play the Jagpan 3 100 a little bit like a heavy. It doesn't have a turret, but uh, it certainly has the armor, and with no artillery in this battle, uh, I can see that. Um, Crazy, not too scared to, to get up, to get right into the faces of these enemy heavy tanks and really blow one of them a new one. He got uh, that mouse for 980 hit points of damage. You can see he's got heat loads around it, which is premium ammunition for this tank. 170 millimeter gun, that is absolutely enormous. 170 millimeters, 1,050 damage if it penetrates, 420 penetration. He doesn't quite land that shot towards a Panzer camp wagon 7. Standard rounds are 299 penetration, so it's an extra 121 penetration with the premium rounds armor piercing compared to the heat rounds as his platoon mate David Co David Co David Co David Kosh is a David Kosh on television here in uh, Australia. Anyway, it's probably not him. Crazy him from Crown is um, asking the mouse for a, a little bit of help. Get stuck in there, son. He's saying to the mouse, get stuck in there. You've got the armor. you got the DPM. you got the gun. you got the balls, hopefully, as uh, he looks again towards a Panzer Camp Wagon 7. Doesn't miss that one. That one goes straight into the side of the turret of the Tier 10 German rear turreted heavy tank. His, uh, his old mate David Co 7 from Seriously Clan has picked up two kills. David Quar's doing okay over there in his T-62A. It looks like he's, he's not doing too bad at all. From Pyro and of course Crazy from Crown, he's Jagpanzer E100 looking for more memes here. Unfortunately he bounces the German heavy tank and German heavy tanks, especially at tier 10, they do like bouncing shots that's for sure. So if you're on a mission to do block damage for your personal missions or anything like that then, um, then, uh, well, then a German heavy tank could be the way to go. They finally lose their First tank, but the score 3-1 now. Crazy, but uh, showing great restraint here. Not going too far, even though he's right at the at the front lines. He wants this mouse to come in and start shooting, just like that. Takes 882 hit points off the enemy mouse. Now you'd hope that that mouse would go and kill it. Looks like he did. 4-1 the score now on Westfield, and. Um, Crazy from Crown, trying to get himself into a better position now. He's already done nearly 3,000 damage. He's blocked 490, probably a shot from maybe the enemy mouse. That does about 490 hit points. Looks towards the object 268. That'll be, oh, it would have been beautiful if that went through, but unfortunately, he bounced the Russian tank destroyer. 6-2 is the score. Bit of, uh, bit of the usual crap going on in the chat. You can see on the minimap, the eastern flank is in a bit of trouble there. Just an E50 on his own against three enemy tanks. In fact, he's gone. So is the 113. Maybe the 113 was down there as well. I didn't quite catch where he was. Crazy fires clutch. Doesn't land a shot on the object 268. They're still winning. 7-4. Uh, people calling each other morons in the chat. It's, it gets out of control. But of course, David Co 7 from Seriously Clad in his Super Conqueror having an absolute ripper. He's on four kills in his Super Conqueror. And um, I'm sure he's on a hell of a lot of damage too. There you go. 1,012. That was a better roll. Those earlier rolls he got in there were all under 1,000. Considering the tank has a, it's supposed to have an average damage of 1,050. The 1,012 damage that he just did into the Object 268. Certainly um, still a little bit on the low side. But once you pass that magic 1,000 hit points of damage into an enemy tank, you, you've got to be happy. With that, the uh, the guy in the 113 who is dead, uh, clearly not too happy with the IS-7's performance, calling him all kinds of names, uh, but Crazy and David Coe in the Super Conqueror as well as David Qua, maybe they know each other, two Davids from Pyro in the T-62A, clearly can see what's going on. Uh, and it looks like they're moving into a position where they can try and help that eastern flank. The Object 268 all by himself there, up there at B7. 
towards the cap. Those enemy medium tanks, I would not be surprised if they went for a bit of a push. On to the green flag. Unfortunately, David Quire of the T-62A goes down. They're still winning 10-5. You'd think that... Um, you'd think they'd be looking okay. But who knows? You never know. Now, of course, don't forget to check Crazy about on Twitch. There will be a uh, link down the bottom. The 113 clearly not doesn't want to go back and play another game. He wants to keep um, taking the piss out of the IS-7. Uh, we'll, we'll see how they both went at the end of this battle. You can see the medium tanks engaging the TV TVPT 5051, the T-62A. The STB-1 got the kill on the Object 140, and all of a sudden... Uh, what, I don't know what is, is happening here. I don't know what Crazy was doing. I'm just going to try and speed this up a bit as he tries it. It's decided against, decided against using his old mate's uh, dead tank as a little bit of cover to protect his lower plate. 10-7 now as the E5 goes down. Everybody's sniping away. He finally sees something to shoot at, but the TVPT 50-51 on full health pulls back behind the uh, behind that ridge line back over there and now the 268 goes down and all of a sudden the score is 10 8 the object 140 does hit crazy but he's jack panzer e100 but of course he bounces the shot now he's using a different dead tank as a little bit of cover to cover his lower plate and give himself some more cover the is7 finally goes forward but no nobody really with vision gonna out vision those mediums, I wouldn't think. An E50M, the object 140, STB, T62A, T62A actually just went down to the T57, probably just out of view range as Crazy looks at. That's the one he wants to hit. He does, he gets him for a thousand and eighty-six. That's much a much better roll. Took a full thousand and eighty-six hit points off the TVPT 51, and that's what he needed to do because that uh, auto loading check medium tank was on pretty high health and now he'll sort of I well, one would hope that he will sort of be a little bit more careful or be a little bit less inclined to to yolo these heavy tanks 11 10 now they were up by five tanks not too long ago crazy from clown clan up to nearly 5,000 hit points of damage a super conqueror David Ko clearly having a good game as well crazy trying to support his platoon mate by aiming towards that STB and, of course, the E50M was last spotted over there as well. It's going to be a hard one to land. It doesn't quite land it. He, I reckon he could have aimed for maybe another second as David Coe in the Super Conqueror. Quickly realising that nobody else is, is really trying to get vision on these tanks. Getting down his tank into a good hold-down position down here where he can just sort of poke over this ridge line. Try and maintain some vision on this STB. And hopefully somebody can... Um, get rid of him. Oh, that'd be nice if it hits. Of course, it doesn't. 4,943 hit points of damage. 1,200 damage blocked. 11 all is the score. Is uh, letting his teammates know that he's reloading. And what is left? There's a Super Conqueror. And being backed up quite well by the T-57 Heavy. That T-57 Heavy having a pretty good game as well. He's on three kills at the moment. And he just wants to... He'd love to land this shot. That STB-1 is not going to... Is he going to back up? We don't... We, Got it. He's got to get this. There you go. Picks up his first kill. Gets rid of that STB. That STB, probably the tank that's been lighting uh, whatever tanks have been down here in the southeast corner. The TVP T5051, we know he's on around about 800 hit points. E50 in, I'm not too sure he was out of vision. And the, and the Object 140, both out of, out of view range when... Um, when I last saw them. There's a TVP just outside that circle on the mini-map. So he moves forward only on 283 hit points. He bounces the Object 140. So the Object 140 is over there where that uh, 113, the dead guy, is uh, pinging the map. And maybe maybe the dead guy now has a little bit of confidence in the players left in this game. David Coe on four kills. The T57 having a good one on three kills. Crazy on one kill, but 5,751 hit points of damage. He cops a little bit of damage there from the E50 and the Object 140. Takes him down to 1,064 hit points. And uh, now it's a case of hurry up and wait. The Grill 15 coming to play now, finally. That Grill 15, not sure why. I'm sure there was a reason, but he did seem to spend a little bit too much time back there at uh, at B6 where he, he wouldn't have even been able to to shoot the enemy tanks even if they were lit so so maybe I'm not sure if that was the best idea is they're advising the grill 15 to go and cap maybe put a little bit of cap pressure on the E50M goes down to the T50 
T57. And look, the grill. Clearly the grill, a little bit hungry for a bit more damage. There's only two enemy tanks left, the Object 140 and the TVP, as predicted by uh, by David Quar from Pyro in the T62. Uh, yep, he's not going to survive much longer. Didn't want to listen to the advice of his teammates and go and sit on the cap. Of course, if he had have gone to the red flag, then, then these guys are pretty much... They'll be stuck there for a while. They've got a few tanks to get through, the T57 on uh, on 1,081 hit points. David in the Super Conqueror, who um, only on 262, so he's going to do probably what the grill should have done, go and put some cap pressure on these t last two remaining medium tanks. And hopefully the Object 140, the TVP T5051, will see that the cap is tripped and start heading back towards here and maybe running the path of Crazy's massive German gun. He's already on 5,751 damage. He'd love to add another 1,000 in there. The IS-7 deciding to start picking the map now. The 113, who's clearly not happy with the 117, with the IS-7's performance, is um, giving uh, giving him a little bit of a burn. The T-57 moving into into range where he might spot the uh, those last two remaining medium tanks, the Object 140 and the TVP. Like I said, the TVP we think is on about 800. Um, 800 hit points, the Object 140. I'm not too sure. Uh, Crazy advises the T57 just just hold there. The TVP can circle. He might come back around here, and that is correct. So the T57 there looks like he's looks like Crazy thinking maybe the T57's job is to maybe hold, stop the the mediums from coming down that 9-0 line, and um, looks like he might be taking it upon himself to make sure that they don't come the other way around. 55 seconds left on the cap timer, two and a half minutes left on the game clock. What's going to happen here? 13-12 is the score. He finds the object 140. Now the object 140 is going to get a shot off, maybe two. He'll be hoping somebody can get shots. It's certainly the Super Conqueror won't be able to get shots, but the T-57 might. The T-57's clearly reloaded. He's not stuffing around. He's going straight for the object 140. The TVP T-5051's 50, heading for David on the cap. David Co 7 from Seriously Clan. The two-minute siren goes off, and Crazy from Crown will be willing this thing to move a little bit quicker. He gets lit again by the Object 140, but the Object 140 will not care about that. He's going clearly going straight for the Super Conqueror with the cap points. TVP just gets spotted again. David Coe's on 262 health. Six seconds left on the cap. David Coe kills the TVP T5051. Very, very good idea choosing that tank over the Object 140, but uh, unfortunately the Object 140 picked up the kill on the Super Conqueror. T57 unloading into that Object 140 now, and I reckon Crazy, by the time that T57 Heavy has clipped, Crazy will be in a position where he can maybe get a shot into the Russian medium tank. Now he can't one-shot him. He's on 1,078 hit points, so he does need the T57 Heavy to come his way. He put the shoots and tracks the Object 140. Is he going to go for the ram kill? I think he might. Will he ram him? He does. He rams him for 317. The <laughs> Jack Panzer E100. Downhill all the way. Downhill all that way. Uh, on, um, what's it called? <laughs> on Westfield. And it is an absolute ripper. Crazy from Crown Clan. Don't forget to check him out on Twitch. A link will be down the bottom. Now, this is uh, an extravaganza of Tier 10 featuring the Jag Panzer E100. Just the one battle with the Jag and the, the following three games will all feature the new Russian light tank, the T100 LT. It's an ace tanker mastery badge from Crazy from Crown Clan. The Hand of God medal. Pfeiffer effect. Steel wall. High caliber. Carried the shit out of that one. 6,685. No, that was David Co. 6,682. Crazy got 6,929 uh, damage. Two kills. Ace Tanker with 1,191 base experience. The IS-7 that they're all picking on did uh, 1,200. The 113, well, you can probably see why he's a bit angry. He was up to up to three and a half. He was certainly on the way to a good game. But I'm not sure why he got killed off so early. Hard to blame others, in my opinion. Hard to blame others for, for your for your own mistakes. 
dying early. I'm sure the i7 probably should have supported him, but if he doesn't, you don't go off by yourself. The Grill 15, uh, not too good there. He'll be, uh, he won't be rubbing his hands together with that result. 13 shots fired, 9 hit, 7 penetrated in the Jagpans Re 100 featuring Crazy from Crown Clan. 6,929 damage, 2906 from a distance of more than 300 metres, 2,000 damage blocked, a little bit of assisted, Ace Tanker, thank you very much, don't forget to check him out on Twitch, he is a very, very good player, much better player than I am, now I know what you're thinking, what is happening here, this is a grand battle, this is my old mate Fury Returns from 1AR Clan, and you can see the minimap, a little bit different, is in the T100, the T100 LT, the uh, tier 10 Russian light tank, not kicking back and... Uh, not kicking back and sniping in this one. He's looking for vision on the enemy team and looking to get uh, some exciting gameplay on this new map called Nebelberg. Nebelberg, very uh, hard one for me to say. But anyways, got there with his little Russian light tank. That shot was never going to go through. Looking at the gun. 100mm gun, 300 alpha damage, three, 230 penetration with APCR rounds. Now, APCR rounds are standard. Armor piercing rounds are premium. A little bit a little bit different there, 248 penetration, so it's an extra 18 penetration with the premium rounds. Of course it does have the high explosive, which will give you a bit more damage for a hell of a lot less pen, 50 penetration. Is looking at working away at that T110E5, cops a shot for his trouble, he's up to 600 damage, and of course you can see the, um, you can see on the score, you can see if you want to change the score, you basically have to use the tab key to see who you might be up against or what kind of tanks. Up the top of the screen, you can see the score 0, zero and it's on 94%. I think that 94% is an indication of the total combined health on both on both teams, if that makes sense, on this new grand battle mode. It's a totally different to what... Uh, And there are obviously different ways of looking at your these these tanks here, and that's why hovering the mouse makes looks looks a little bit <laughs> looks a little bit confusing. It's been a long time since I've had a grand battle. I've been grinding the T9s. But anyway, Fury returns. He's uh, getting stuck right in. Look at the mini map. You can see the 30 versus 30. So there's 60 tanks in this battle. Uh, you can see a few. Uh, there's a heavy, a medium, and a few TDs going the east. There's a, a number brawling in the town. It looks like mainly, um, looks like mainly heavy tanks on Fury's team. Brady braving the town, and mediums on the enemy team. A lot of stuff happening in the middle, and that's where Fury's trying to maintain vision on all these tanks and just chip away to the size of tanks such as that C110E3. Brings his damage up to 1538 damage. He's already got four and a half. Make that five thousand. Make that six thousand assisted damage and this is what you can do in a light tank on this map with so many more hit points up for grabs with 30 enemy tanks if you're on a light tank um, you can certainly just soak up that assisted damage up to over over 6,000 now he's done nearly 2,000 himself looking for a shot into the side of the 140 just misses the shot and with this with the up the top you can see there the score now 7-3, 7-4 as the IS-4 goes down to the WZ-1115A, 8-4 now and that percentage, I would s summarise that that percentage would be uh, an indication of of how much health is left on both teams. So the score is 8-4, Fury Returns has just clicked over 8,000 damage so with every tank that gets killed he seems to be getting another 1,000 assisted damage, let's see if he can continue that, just working away on this ridgeline, keeping vision on these tanks, he gets tracked by the WZ Trip 15A. Use his repair kit, which is the right thing to do. He doesn't, really, don't want to be stuck out there with uh, those other tanks. Possibly looking at it, we all know what it's like in a light tank. People see that um, people see that you're in a tank that's quite easily to, easy to penetrate, and they they can't help themselves. Like this T57, the T57 absolutely yolos. Only got one shot into Fury, damages his driver but fixes him with a quick tap of the 5 key. With the score 12 to 4, um, you'd be used to, or 12 to 6 now, you'd be used to this being all over but of course it's not, it's it's uh, 30 versus 30, it's not 15 versus 15. Fury returns, cannot believe he's lucky, he's up to 2,000 damage, which might not sound uh, groundbreaking but his assisted damage up to 9,000 already. When I was playing 
this map on the super test I was using, not the super test, the sandbox, I was I was actually using this exact same tank. And it, it, if you get into a good position, it is absolutely fantastic for just soaking up that um, assisted damage. He's clearly worried about that E100. And why wouldn't he be? Because he's only got 240 hit points. So maybe he's decided, well, E100, probably not the uh, tank I want to be taking on with only 240 hit points up his sleeve. But to be fair, on 240 hit points, look, most of those remaining enemy tanks could probably take him out with one shot. Three enemy tanks go down pretty quickly. Brings the score up to 17 to 7. Never thought I'd say that in a World of Tanks video. That is that E100 on 89 health. The other E100 on very low hit points as well. And Fury will be thinking, no worries. I'm going to see if I can seagull one of these kills. Get rid of, of a heavy tank. Now, one E100 got killed. The one who's not killed has just fired. So he's got all the time in the world to aim. Chooses not to aim. Not sure why. Not sure why you auto aimed on that one. I guess he thought somebody else was probably about to... Um, about to get the kill. Looking firmly towards the Jag Panzer E100. That shot looks like it might have missed. Is he got the... I don't think he's got the... Looks like the Jag Panzer might have been aiming the opposite way there. I think... I'm sure it's just my poor vision. 21 to 7 is the score on Nebelberg. Artillery gets spotted, of course. Artillery is a totally different uh, way of playing on this map because I believe you... It doesn't matter what artillery you're in. You can only can't get the whole map so artillery needs to do something that artillery are not very good at and that's move forward three returns unlucky not to penetrate that jag panzer e100 he probably wants to stay away from that gun that's probably the uh stay away from that big german gun the same gun crazy pad on westfield now he's tracked now so i reckon he's He's pretty safe. Puts another shot into the side of the tier 10 German tank destroyer. 23 to 8 is the score. And you can see the uh, the hit points remaining. 45% on Fury's team. Zero on the enemy team. And maybe that's it. 24 to 8. Wonder what happened there. Did they did they cap it out? Who knows? It is the new it is the new battle mode. The uh, the grand battle on Nebelberg. And of course I think the aim is to the aim is pretty much to, to cap this one out. But we've got two more replays featuring the T-100 light tank after we check out Fury Returns. Result, it's a first class spotter medal, Hand of God, Fire for Effect. Confederate for shooting more enemy tanks than anyone else. Patrol duty. And uh, we'll call that one a uh, will. 9,000, over 9,000 assisted damage. He topped the score charts there. And have a look at, it just looks funny, doesn't it, with all those names there. Top the score charts there with... Uh, 1153 experience and of course I haven't played enough of these grand battles to work out what's a good score 2757 doesn't sound too bad at all but uh, a few of them hitting 4000 a few other players hitting 3000 and as usual a few passengers down the bottom looking at the final page of the post game battle results 18 shots fired 14 hit 9 penetrated 2757 damage done 9604 assisted damage he made some coin with a premium account didn't see any premium consumables or ammunition used I think there might have been a few premium ammunition rounds thrown around but uh, that's what you'd expect on a light tank light tank game look I'll just look just scrolling through and see if anyone got any cap points maybe that's it maybe that's why it won't went like that who knows but anyway it was an absolute ripper actually no all of the enemy team were killed in that in that previous game it was 24 versus 24 that's why um, that's why it ended with the score showing the way it did it didn't show 30 maybe I should have picked that one up earlier anyway this is the third battle in this Extravaganza of Tier 10s featuring the T-100 light tank as well as Quasip in the Jag Panzer E-100. This is the Flying Elite Community Contributor and uh, Ace Tank, Ace Tanker player. He's in the T-100 light tank again on uh, Westfield looking for vision towards the east. He's spotted a few tanks there, the M4A1 Revel Reese, the Rain 40T, the Sheridan. He's already picked up some assisted damage, mainly on that Sheridan who's been taken down to 100 and 91 hit points. He's looking at the M4. Shoots and bounces again. That's the second time he bounced that tank. That tank is not known for its armor, folks. So I'm not really sure what happened there. I don't know how you could bounce the um, M4A1 Revelrisi twice. But at least he didn't do it a third time. Gets him for 268 damage. Still, he's 
getting plenty of assisted damage in this tank. Gets another shot into the tier 8 French premium medium tank. And uh, he knows he knows he's got to chip away at it. It's only a tier 8 tank, but it's still a tank that you need to get rid of. It's a tier 10 battle, but only three tier 10 tanks on each team flying elite in the T100 light tank. The uh, Jagpanzer E100 and, of course, the big old lumbering E100. They're both on the other side of the map. So Pyro, flying elite from Pyro clan. I nearly said Pyro from flying elite clan then. Uh, goes forward, uses his vision to try and keep these tanks lit. The Sheridan... Looks like he might be the only one not running away. Not sure what this Russian gun's doing there. So these Now, the Flying Elite is not aiming poorly. Uh, the, these shots are just going a little bit wide. It is a Russian gun. It's not known for its accuracy. He's up to 654 damage. 1730 damage. Uh, assisted damage. Looking for the kill shot on the Sheridan. And um, after this game, we'll, there'll be another Fast and Furious battle featuring the Flying Elite. In the T-100 Light Tank. As he waits for his opportunity to get rid of that Sheridan, who looks like he might be doing a runner with a T-54 Mod 1 and another tank going for him as well. Flying Elite not stuffing around. Wants to get rid of the Panther too. Gets rid of him, brings the score up to 4-1. Two kills to the Flying Elite, 1,037 hit points of damage, 2,112 assisted damage, and he's not stuffing around now. Moving forward, he is on full health, and of course, the good thing about this T100 light tank, it can be it can be pretty hard to hit, mainly because of it's such it's got such a low profile. If you have a look at it, that is, it looks like it's been stepped on by an elephant. Well, maybe it has. Uh, the gun certainly not known for its accuracy, and he will be not happy that uh, Scorpion got away with flying one of the shots. Uh, this Scorpion, maybe flying elite could have got that kill as well. There's that Sheridan. He looks like he's given up and gone back to the garage. That time he doesn't even aim and he gets the kill on Captain Bigglesworth. What kind of name is that in the Sheridan? Finds artillery and you can't not shoot the artillery when you find it. I would imagine that... Um, I would imagine that... Uh, Ready to fire. <laughs> Go. Russian guns at their finest. When you when you aim, when you aim, you um, you don't hit it when you don't aim. They go through. Flying elite. Eleven one is the score on. Um, yeah, that's my fight rigger. Eleven to one. Twelve one's the score on Westfield. Flying elite. Auto waves again. Gets the kill on the Lorraine forty two. That's six kills. That's a top gun confirmed. He's looking towards the other Lorraine. Two Lorraines in the one battle. Panther 8.8 goes down, and it's just the one Lorraine left. He's looking for... Looking for the final kill. He gets the final kill. Seven kills. Unlucky not to get eight, but you'll take that result any day of the week. He certainly uh, he certainly did very, very well in, in that battle on... Uh, on Westfield. An ace tank and mastery badge. Sorry, I found some of that a little bit amusing. An ace tank and mastery badge for the Flying Elite. It's also, um, what else is it? A bruiser medal. Fire for effect. Tank sniper and the top gun. And yeah, the phone threw me, but that's that's just what happens. Anyway, ace tank for the Flying Elite from Pyro. The T100 LT, the new tier 10 Russian light tank. 3,931 hit points of damage. 7 kills. 1,209 base experience. 21 shots fired. 18 hits. 16 went through 2,627 assisted damage. Of course, the assisted damage, nothing like what uh, Fury did, but didn't really need to. There's no one else was sort of there. He just sort of tore through that eastern flank on Westfield all by himself, which was absolutely fantastic to see. Topped the score by experience and by damage. Seven kills, of course. Unlucky not to get a Radley. Those, some of those shots that were perfectly aimed and didn't land, um, just, I don't know what to say. I just... We've all had games like that, I guess. We've all had games like that, I guess. And it was um, certainly a fun-looking tank. This is the Flying Elite from Pyro again. Now, this is on the day I've recorded this. This is he just sent me the replay not too long before. Uh, again, top tier in a tier 10 battle. Just three tier 10 tanks on each team. In a, on a map, Winter Himmelsdorf, Winter Himmelsdorf, which is not known for... Um, not known for lights. 
I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Anyway, so the Flying Elite doing what light tanks often do on this map, going up to the hill, trying to get vision on the hill, as well as a few snipey snipey shots into the centre of the field, which is, as long as you don't stay lit, that uh, it can be a, a pretty good way to uh, ruin your enemy's day. And there's, <laughs> there's that gun again. Oh my god. Look, I'm, I was looking forward to playing this tech. That's better. 348 hit points of damage into the side of the Jag Tiger. And Flying Elite will be laughing as well. Just sitting here going, oh well, don't move. Yeah, don't move, Jag Tiger. I'll I'll just keep shooting you. That's alright. The Jag Tiger thinking, well, gee, someone's shooting me. I wonder who it is. He's not even... He's just... Oh, this is wrong. This is... Well, you can't blame the Flying Elite for take. You've got to punish... Your, your uh, team, your enemy, sorry, I should say, for for bad moves like that. That Jag Tiger did not want to move. Maybe he was, maybe he was lighting somebody else up to shoot. I'm not really sure. He bounces the Jag Panther two at tier eight. Um, not the not the most weakly armored tank destroyer by any stretch of the imagination. Stretch of the imagination, I guess. Flying Elite shooting again gets a shot into the JP two. Finally takes him down to 311. Looks like plenty of people are shooting that Jag Panther two. Now that should have been a kill. Um, so, well, he got, he got some assisted damage on it, I guess. Two zip the score on Winter Himmelsdorf. Flying Elite looking around, looking towards these enemy tanks, looking towards the Jag Tiger. Looking, looking, looking. It's an extravaganza of tier 10 tanks, the Jag Panzer E100. Featuring Crazy for the first video and uh, three, three replays featuring this tank, which I absolutely love the T100 LT the Russian tier 10 light tank and now the flying elite he's just playing with this T44 now the AMX 1305 comes to play and decides no, no we can't we can't let this bloke do this we need to flying elite is uh, needs to be needs to be stopped so that the um, AMX 3105 the auto-loading French light tank at tier 10 Goes forward and tries to punish the Flying Elite. Flying Elite picks up his first kill. Gets rid of the T44. The score is 4 zip. He's down to 64 hit points though. So he needs to be a little bit careful. Gets a shot into the side of the low. That's the, the premium heavy tank. Premium German heavy tank. Just kicking back here looking for opportunistic shots. That shot was never going to land. But uh, you can't blame him. 2,779 damage done. And I think the Flying Elite's decided. I think I've pushed as much luck as I can in this little engagement bounces <laughs> bounces the T49 gets spotted himself now you know somebody will be aiming towards him critical hits the T49 again for the second time one kill for the flying elite 2779 hit points of damage looking for a shot on that Jag Tiger I don't look if this works I'm not going to say it if it no that one's not going to work only two standard rounds left the back of the IS-3 could be a nice, big, fat, juicy target. He tracks him. Uh, he does get spotted. The IS-3 not turning around to look at the Flying Elite. He wants to keep him... He'll be hoping for some assisted damage. Yeah, he's starting to get some assisted damage now with this uh, Russian light tank. Shoots him. He actually gets his second kill. Gets rid of the Tier 8 Russian heavy tank. Now there's their Waffenträger Ralph Panzer 4. He wants to keep him tracked as well. This is the kind of stuff he can do, even if you're on low health. And somebody sets that Waffentrager Alf Panzer 4 on fire. And of course, this is just a massive amount of assisted damage. Heading the Flying Elite's way, the Waffentrager Alf Panzer 4 gets killed. Charioteer goes down. 10 2 is the score. Two kills to the Flying Elite. 1561, 1591. Assisted damage 3041 hit points of damage done by himself. He's down to 64 hit points. And look at these guys kicking back on the side of Winter. Himmelsdorf. Ah, oh, we're snipers. We like sniping. That's what we do. And plenty of players do it. We all know that. 10-3 is the score. 3,000 damage done. 1591 assisted damage. He's not happy with that. He can see more hit points up for grabs. He's going for it. The Emil gets taken out. Was that Emil, one of the tanks that was sniping up there? Now, I heard... Oh, <laughs> the E4 shoot. And that's why he poked, because he knew the E4, of course, doesn't have the fastest reload. He gets the ammo rack shot. Picks up the kill on the tier 10. Turreted American tank destroyer. Got 1,076 hit points of damage for that shot. The AMX 13105. That's a guy who had the big hard on for the Flying Elite not so long ago. Rolls over the cap. Looks like 
that AMX is going back here to possibly try to circle the T28 prototype. And um, you might say, who cares about a T28 prototype in a tier 10 game? But Flying Elite, you can see he's, he's fired two shots. He's definitely fired three. Is he reloading? And Flying Elite this reckons, I reckon he might be reloading just by going by the fact that he hasn't gone after the Flying Elite on 64 health. Uh, that, that tells me that he was most certainly reloading. The Conqueror gun carrier gets spotted in the southwest corner. 14 to 6. It's looking like a whitewash. The Flying Elite having an absolute ripper on three kills. 4,727 damage. 1591 assisted damage. I would have thought the assisted damage would have been higher, but maybe people just... He was certainly spotting uh, plenty of tanks. Auto Ames puts a shot into the Conqueror gun carrier and uh, finally picks up his fourth kill. There you have it, the T100 light. It's awesome when it wants to be, that's for sure, looking at that. But I'm, I'm, I'm tipping at times it can be a right royal pain in the ass. It was not an ace dagger, unfortunately, just a first class. But like he said to me, he said, Stewie, this one is not an ace, but it's a bit of a fun game. And it certainly was. The first class, the bruiser medal, demolition expert for blowing the head off that E4. That's, that's not, it's not that unusual to have a rack a, a something with no armor in a, in a light tank but it's pretty satisfying when you blow the head off a T110E4 fighter metal fire for effect confederate and high caliber you can see all these tanks here on the right that he had something to do with getting rid of it he was in a tier 10 battle just three tier 10 tanks on his team and of course the flying elite in the T100 light tank. The Pat Chat looks like he had a pretty good game as well, but nothing like the Flying Elite in the T100. 5,153 damage. Four kills, 1146 base experience, 1591 assisted. I would have, sure, would have been sure that the assisted damage should have been higher on that one. Bear in mind, he got about uh, 11 or 12 or 1300 just with that Waffentrager that he tracked and then somebody else lit the thing on fire. Nobody else on the enemy team really had a blind up, but the Flying Elite certainly did with 5,153 damage in the T100 light tank. That's why it's so fun, but of course you can also see why sometimes it's just an absolute pain in the bum. Look at it just when you're just there. Aim those shots in the, not that game, the other game on um, Westfield. Fully aimed into the Sheridan and also the Sheridan, the Scorpion G, it was as well. And the shots just, who knows where they went. You just, I think those shells went into the next game. But of course, when it works, it's a hell of a lot of fun. Didn't notice that, what kind of consumables. Looking at that, 50,000 for ammunition. He probably did fire a little bit of premium ammunition, which is armor-piercing rounds in this tank. Uh, so it cost him 1,487 credits. But well worth it for a pretty fun game. He fired 30 shots, 25 hit, 16 went through. So just over 50% accuracy in that game but it's that kind of gun I guess and there were a few shots that were fight that were whoop. you know shooting between trying to shoot those tank destroyers and he was unlucky some of those shots certainly should have been kill shots some of them were well the kind of shots that you take and you, and you have a bit of a punt and hope that it works well anyway thank you very much for the replays um, Flying Elite Fury and Crazy. Don't forget to check out Crazy on Twitch and Flying Elite on YouTube. Links will be down there. If you want to see me play live uh, on Twitch, certainly not the best player in the world, but link for that will be down at the bottom as well. Once again, thanks for the replays, lads. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take care and see you all next time.